Hi everyone, how are you doing today? Everybody doing well? Wow, we're coming to the end of your school year. I bet you are all so excited. It feels like summertime, doesn't it? Has anybody jumped in their pool yet? Hmm, still just a wee bit chilly for me, but I'm looking forward to it. We have beautiful blue skies outside. It's so nice and all of our cacti are blooming right now. Beautiful colors, pinks, yellows, purples. Time to get outside and have some fun. Well, today we are finishing the Old Testament section of our Bible stories that we have been reading. Everything so far has come from the Old Testament. And today we will conclude with chapter 21 and it is called Rebuilding the Walls. Remember last week we talked about, well, we talked about beautiful Esther and how she saved the Jewish people. And the week before that, we talked about how the Jews were allowed to leave Babylon and return home. And they were going to be working on building, rebuilding the temple. Let's see. So remember, they're not homesick anymore. They got to go home. And we read about Esther. She had a lot of courage to stand up and do the right thing. And today, we are going to talk about, let's see, rebuilding the walls. And we start in the book of Nehemiah. Hmm, let's see. It says, I said to them, you can see the trouble we're in. Jerusalem has been destroyed. Fire has burned up its gates. Come on. Let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. So I wonder who was speaking there. Was that Nehemiah? Sounds like a leader for sure, telling everybody, come on, let's rebuild our beautiful city of Jerusalem. All right. Over time, the people of Judah returned home from their exile in Babylon. The first group to return to Jerusalem was very large, about 50,000 people. They rebuilt the temple. The second group of people returned under the leadership of Ezra the priest. A third group of people returned with Nehemiah. That group started rebuilding the walls around the city of Jerusalem and God's holy temple. It wasn't an easy task because the local people weren't happy and did everything they could think of to stop their work. That doesn't sound very nice. Hmm, let's see what's going to happen. Why do you think those people would stop them from their hard work? Well, let's see. Here we have our pictures today, and it says, Jerusalem restored. What do we have here? Let's see what our pictures are telling us. Jerusalem restored. Nehemiah was living in Persia, serving under the king. And he was sad when he heard that the beautiful city built by David and Solomon was now just a pile of stones. Nehemiah prayed to God and decided, I must do something. 
I will go and help the people rebuild Jerusalem. Does sound like a leader. Once he got permission from the king, Nehemiah journeyed to Jerusalem. He was ready to start rebuilding the walls so the people could be protected from their enemies. In those days, they built big walls around the cities for protection. While the city slept, Nehemiah and his men rode their horses around the outside of Jerusalem to inspect the broken walls and come up with a plan to fix them. Wow, now he sounds like a leader and a builder, a planner. The next day, Nehemiah gathered the Jewish leaders and explained the plan. He says, Each citizen will be responsible for repairing the part of the wall that's in front of his home or shop. He does have a plan. He is delegating. He is sharing the responsibility with everybody. The people worked hard, and at first, the work went well. But then, some of their enemies started to cause trouble. They made fun of Nehemiah and his plan. But Nehemiah, he told them to mind their own business. He sounds very smart. He's not bothered by those people. He knows who he is, and he is sticking firm to his plan. He's not bothered by those other people making fun of him. So he goes on. These pictures I see, they are building and shoveling, some repairing the wall there. They're hard at work. All right, when the walls were halfway finished, the builders became tired and discouraged. Hmm. They worried the neighboring enemies would hurt them while they worked. Nehemiah knew how to encourage the people. Don't be afraid, said Nehemiah. Remember the Lord. He is great and powerful. So Nehemiah also has a strong faith in God. To protect the new walls and safeguard the people, Nehemiah posted guards. So he had some guards put around. He instructed the workers to carry a weapon for protection. The builders worked with a spear at their side or a sword in their belt. And the walls and the people were safe. So they had a weapon for protection just in case they needed it. They had some guards looking out for them. Really does sound like Nehemiah has it all figured out and he trusts the Lord completely. I like Nehemiah. Let's see what happens. All right, looks like maybe here's a picture of the guard. While they're working hard, they're watching and protecting. Oh, wow. This is pretty. Can you see there? It looks like they built something. And they look happy. Let's see. It says, when the walls were completed, the people celebrated. The priests and officials divided the people into two groups. They marched around the walls in opposite directions and met at the temple for a Thanksgiving service and a great feast. So they are praising God and giving their thanks. They were able to complete that project safely. 
and they're happy and they're very thankful to God. Let's see what God's message has for us today. He says, My temple is established, and you will worship in peace. That sounds good. The walls of the city are restored. Yay. I have brought you back to your land, my holy city, as I promised long ago. I am your God, and you are my people. That is still true today. My children, now you are home. Yes, we know the Jewish people sure went through a lot over all these years because they, they lost their faith, they doubted God, they fell back into bad ways, they were naughty, and they were punished. And eventually, they lost their beautiful temple and they were taken as slaves, remember, by King Nebuchadnezzar? But now, it seems they are back and they will live in peace. And Nehemiah was a big help for that. I like Nehemiah because even when people made fun of him, what did he do? Was he sad? Did those people make him feel bad? No, Nehemiah was strong. He knew who he was. He knew that God loved him. So he didn't care if those people made fun of him. He was working mightily for God. And so he persisted. He moved forward. He didn't let those people bother him. Boy, I wish we could always be like that too. I know there are times when, gosh, maybe at school, somebody says something not nice to you or your friend, and it hurts your feelings, doesn't it? Well, share that with God. And remember that God loves you no matter what. And he's really the only one you're trying to please and do good things for. So don't let it get you down if someone makes fun of you. You stand firm. Be bold and courageous. Well, thank you so much for listening to our story today. I just can't believe we have finished reading the Old Testament part of the Bible. Well, next week... Instead of getting together for a Bible story, I hope that you will join us for church online and watch the children's musical. They are going to be giving a musical about some heroes in the Bible, some of the heroes we've talked about. There's David, remember David and Goliath, and Esther, the beautiful queen that saved her people, and Joseph, Remember his brothers, they were not nice. They were jealous of him and they threw him in a pit. But things worked out for Joseph, didn't they? We've got Joseph and we've got a Moses. So, and we've got Miriam. We've got a lot of the characters that we've been reading about. We're going to show their stories through music in a musical next Sunday. So I hope that you will join us and watch the children as they enact, re-enact some of these Bible stories that we've been learning about. Thanks again for joining me today. And let us close today with the Lord's Prayer. Kate, how about John? Jonathan, can you help us too? Yep, Kate and Jonathan, will you say the Lord's Prayer today? Bye-bye. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Bye. We miss everyone. Yeah.